scripture this morning is from John chapter 17, verses 20 to 26, and Luke chapter 5, verses, verses 4 to 11. You may follow along on the screen or in your Bibles if you so wish. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Luke. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nests began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will, be fish, for pe you will fish for people. So they pulled their bo boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. I think scripture just sounds more eloquent and interesting when you read it with a British accent. Maybe it's just me. I always want to say the word Holy Ghost after I hear Bobby read. Anybody else like that? The Holy Ghost. <laughs> Without a vision, people perish. Without a mission, people flounder. Last week, those same words were written in the bulletin that are written in there this week. And I shared with you the mission and the vision of Hillside as identified by our vision team. Okay? The mission is what we do. The vision is why we do it. The mission involves practical steps that are taken to fulfill the purpose that we believe God is leading us toward. Heard that last week. We talked about the first two. Our mission. Hillside is called to love God, serve others, grow in Christ, and go live out our faith. Let that sink in. We're called to love God, serve others, grow in Christ, and go live out our faith. Our vision, our vision, Hillside is a center of hope in our community as we reflect the love of Jesus. A center of hope in our community as we reflect the love of Jesus. Those two together up here, I asked you, did we, did we get it right? Have we identified the values of Hillside? Did we capture who we are? and who we want to become. 
we, the vision team, we just didn't pull these thoughts out of thin air. I promise you, we didn't sit around a table and, and try to craft a hip and cool marketing scheme to get you to buy into what it is we think we want to do. Because that's the way of the world, isn't it? We buy a hip and cool marketing scheme and then you want to buy the product or do what it is we're selling. Sign up. Engage. That wasn't the purpose. What we did was, as I shared with you, we listened to feedback from you. You were invited to cottage meetings. You were invited to a uh, town hall meeting. Uh, we asked you questions like, what brought you to Hillside? And once you were here, why in the world did you stay? Some of you answered that, well, I've been here my whole life. But for others of you, you know, that, that's not, you know, why did you stay? What do you like most about your church and why would someone outside of our church out there who doesn't have a relationship with God why would they want to be a part of Hillside we ask questions like why what are we growing into what will we look like in five years and we weren't looking for well the same but different we'll just look older no that wasn't what we were looking for what will our church evolve into What areas do we lack in? What do we need to do better? What should we do more of? I think we can all agree we probably could stand to eat less. Just, or maybe that's just me. We like potluck. Isn't that one of the fruits of the Spirit? Breaking bread together, that's what we call it, isn't it? Breaking bread. That's how we arrived at our mission and our vision. We narrowed it down to, to four keywords or anchors, handles, if you will. And we got some pretty neat pictures to go along with them, not just so that they're hip and cool, but hopefully they're easily identifiable. Love, serve, grow, and go. Love, serve, grow, and go. Now, this is audience participation time, all right? Turn to the person on your right or your left, and I want you to say those four words to them, okay? Okay. Now do it. I'm not just this isn't a suggestion here. Do it. Turn around. If there's nobody sitting next to you, turn around. Love, serve, grow, go. Okay, one more time. Pretty good. Teachers, they tell you nine, nine times you have to teach something before it sticks. And so we're not going to do a nine-week series on this, I promise. But hopefully over the course of, of the coming weeks and months, um, we will focus our intentional efforts into these four categories and anticipate living into that vision much more quickly. Now, I shared with you last week, the hope that we have identified, the hope that we are called to reflect, we believe is only found in Jesus Christ. That is the hope of the world. Now, there are a number of civic organizations and clubs out there that provide great programs They do good work. They offer necessary services. And they offer assistance to people. They help a lot of people. And all that's good, but we are not a civic organization or a club. Okay? We're not about better programs and more activities and and, and, and offering help to people. Yeah, we do those things. But they're part of the mission to love serve, grow, and go so that we can live into this vision to reflect the love of Christ and be the hope of the world. Last week we talked about love and serve. Our faith is grounded in love. Love is foundational for who we are. It's the bedrock. Love of God. We respond to the love of God. Remember, we believe that we love because God first loved us, right? So it's a response to the love of God, us reflecting that love back to him and then allowing that love to flow through us out into our world. We're saved by grace through faith, and then our love flows through us, and we fulfill the commandment. Jesus said what? Love each other. Simple and direct. Love each other as an expression of your love for God. Then, Jesus reminded his disciples, as I reminded you, 
that it's an upside down kingdom, right? We don't worship the king who is up on high and everything flows upward. It's upside down. The king in love is the foundation and we serve up. Those with the most power and the greatest freedom and influence in this kingdom, they exercise that power and freedom by doing what? Serving other people. Jesus said, the Gentiles and the Romans, they do what? They lord power over people, enforcing laws which they may or may not follow themselves. He said what? Not so with you. Humbly serve one another. The last will be first, right? The first will be last. Those who want to be great among you, you must be their servant or their slave. Now, both of these were commands, right? They weren't like optional questions that Jesus said, you know, if it feels good to you and you want to be a part of this, if you like, participate by, by loving each other and serving. But if you don't, that's okay. They weren't optional. They were commands. They were directives. We believe, as the vision team, that we do these first two pretty well, okay? Or we're growing into doing them better. We do these really well because you shared with us, what do you like about your church? We love everybody. There's a place for everybody at Hillside. Regardless of where you've been or where you're going, regardless of what you look like, what you do, or what you've done, we love everybody. We welcome everybody here. We believe that it's not just exclusive. God's love isn't exclusive to, to one particular group of people who look like us and think like we do. We believe that God's love is not just reserved for you know, the neat and tidy, the pure and holy, the high and mighty. You shared with us, you believe there's room in the church, there's room at the cross for all people. And we introduce people to God, right? We point them toward Jesus Christ. We encourage that relationship and trust that God will do what? Draw people to himself and call them out of their sin. And then the individual is responsible for giving up behaviors or practices that are not pleasing to God. You know, taking things out of our life that separate us from God. We don't like to talk about that. That's what we call sin, right? I had a church member who would always ask me what I was going to preach on every Sunday. So are you up to bat this Sunday? That's how he approached me. Are you up to bat this Sunday? Everything was a, was a baseball metaphor for him. I'd say, yeah, I'm up to bat. What are you going to preach about? I'd say, sin. I'm going to talk about sin. He said, good, we don't hear enough about sin. Maybe we don't like to hear about sin. But we love well, don't we? And we serve well. Clearly, we live out our Midwestern values, right? Strong work ethic. We try to meet the needs of others. Many of you, many of us, we get our hands dirty. We'll do the hard work. We express our faith. Some of us, some of us, it's the only way we express our faith. We serve. It's how we express our love, right? We serve other people. We work hard. We understand that serving is often inconvenient. It's unglamorous. Many times it goes unnoticed. It's a thankless job that happens somewhere in the back, right? Behind the scenes. And serving often costs us something. It costs us something. But I think we agree that serving is not optional. It's something we're called to do. So we do those first two well, but these last two anchors, these last two values, these key components of our mission, what you shared with us and what we've identified is these are ones that we perhaps could use a little help in. These are ones that, that, that most of you, I think, shared with us that we could do better. 
We needed to be more intentional about growing our faith. Not growing our church, but growing our faith. Getting more connected to the vine, to Jesus Christ, and going deeper in our relationship with God. As a whole body, we weren't sure that we do these really well. They fall into the has room for improvement category. Anybody ever get an evaluation at work? Opportunities for improvement. These were our opportunities for improvement. Maybe because these last two can be hard. They don't always come natural to us. Grow in Christ and go live out our faith. I think these require a little bit more effort on our part. Because you can't just kind of, you see something, somebody who needs love, you just love them. You see somebody who needs serving, you just serve them. But you see something that needs growing, you just, that doesn't make sense, does it? It has to be intentional. And those of you who are farmers, you know that if you don't plant a seed, guess what? In the fall, you ain't getting a crop, are you? If you don't care for it, it's not growing. title to today's message is grow as you go which means that we don't perfect the first three values or three anchors of the mission statement before we do number four I think as a church sometimes not just this church but as a big church we focus so much on the first three and we neglect to actually take it beyond the walls of our church building. Scripture today, Jesus is praying. He's praying for his disciples and he's praying for all believers to make us one. Make them one. Unify them. Strengthen the body. So they're one as as we are one. And and, in very plain English, okay? Strength is in their unity around a simple common cause. What? Keep them focused on the main thing, God. You sent me to point others to you. That's why the church exists. That's why Jesus came, right? To point others to God, to connect us to God. And we believe that we are the living, breathing entity. We are the organization best designed to bring other people to faith in God. We are the body, right? And a living, breathing body, not a building. So in order for us to grow, we have to deepen our relationship with God by seeking after Jesus. And we want everybody who comes and participates and engages in this mission and this vision, we want, we want you to know what you believe, why you believe it, and how it affects our daily living. I think the unique thing about growing is that if you're not growing You're what? You're dying. You're either moving forward or you're moving backwards. Some of us would like to think, well, I can just stand still, but that's not how it works. If you're standing still, the rest of the world is moving away from you. You can't just stop. Science teachers will be proud of me. My physics teacher would be very proud of me right now because the laws of our world say what? An object in motion will remain in motion or an object at rest will remain at rest until what happens? Something stops it and the energy is transferred to something else which then begins to move or something moves the thing from at rest. Grow your faith, deepen your faith, but let's not be a resting object. Because once we're moving in the right direction, it's easier to keep it moving. It's easier to build on what we're already doing. And go. Go. We believe in a practical divinity. Once you're moving, an active faith that takes you beyond these walls. We're not merely meant to gather on Sundays and consume God. Which is hard for our culture to understand because we are a culture of consumers, are we not? Everything is meant to be consumed, discarded. But our faith is not something that's meant to be consumed. It's meant to be lived out as the living, breathing body 
of Christ. We want our faith not just to be something that we, we think, but we want it to be an expression of who we are, who we serve, and whom we belong to. Because the world, however you define that, can be dark. Just watch the news. It can be a dark, unpleasant place, and people are wandering aimlessly. They feel helpless, and they feel hopeless. Now, some of it is due to their own poor decisions and the path that they've chosen to walk down, but some of it's due to no fault of their own. And our objective is to do what? Point them toward a God who we believe will restore their hope, hope that is only found in Jesus Christ. And we can't just do that hunkered down in our safe little church building or our homes talking about faith and never taking any relational risks to interact with people who are far from God. Going requires moving past our fear of rejection because that's what, I mean, everybody says that's what keeps them from engaging with another human being is they don't want to be rejected. What if they don't like me? When Peter calls, or when Jesus calls Peter, James, and John, they were not learned theologians or eloquent speakers. They were fishermen. They were fishermen, commercial fishermen. They worked all night, slept all day. Jesus was teaching, and they came in. And he said, Simon, row me out here so I can talk to these people. Peter rows him out a little bit. Jesus talks to the people. After he's done teaching them, he says, how about we put out in deep water and go fishing? It's the daytime. Now, Peter at this point is thinking, you don't know what you're talking about. You're a preacher, not a fisherman. You don't fish during the day. But because you say so, I will. And so they went out into deep water. And Peter let down his nets. And Scripture tells us that he he caught such a large catch that his boat couldn't hold it. And his buddies... James and John had to come out, and it took two boats to bring in the catch. And at that point, Peter realized, this doesn't happen. This is the greatest catch we've ever had in the history of all fishermendom. And he says, get away from me. I'm an unclean man. You're amazing. And Jesus says, you think that's fun? How about you come with me and we'll go fishing for people? And they left everything. And they followed him. For us, the question is, is will you and I follow Jesus? You think it's possible to change our little corner of the world? Do you believe that we represent hope? Perhaps the question for you is, is you build cars. How about we go build people? You shape minds. How about we go shape hearts? You plow and water and harvest. How about we go out into the field and bring in a harvest? Whatever it is you do, how about we do it for something that is of lasting value? That was the invitation to Peter, James, and John, and that's the invitation to all of us. It's our desire as the vision team that everyone at Hillside, man, woman, child, young, and old, will own this vision and claim this mission. We want everybody to embrace these four anchors. And we think that everybody can remember love, Serve, grow, and go. We want you to embrace them, but we're hoping that it will engage you. 
engage you in caring for our world, in influencing our world, in bringing hope out into our world. Now, practically speaking, if you can't identify what you're doing that falls under those four categories, if you can only identify one or two, then you've got a little work to do in three and four. Or if you're good at loving people and you're great at Bible study, but this whole serving and, and, and going thing you're not too comfortable with, we need to make some changes so that we are doing our faith, living out our faith in all four of these areas. We don't want it just to be something you believe. We want it to be part of who you are. Loving God, coming to worship is a good place to start. Fill you up with God and take it out there. And we want you to serve inside the church building and outside the church building. We want you to grow your faith daily. Daily devotionals. Reading your Bible. Attending a Sunday school class. Joining or starting a small group. Parents and grandparents investing in their kids don't have children or grandchildren, we've got plenty of kids that you can invest in who need other people to love them and help shape their faith. And we want everybody to go live out their faith as part of a mission trip, a day of service, volunteering at school, signing up for some type of organization that does something out in the community. You represent Jesus Christ. You are the light of the world. Take that light out there. You represent hope. We represent hope. Hillside, we believe, represents hope. Will you buy into the vision? We are a center of hope in our community as we reflect the love of Jesus. Will you be a part of the mission to love God, serve others, grow in Christ, and go live out your faith. What's your role? What's your role in achieving the mission and making the vision become a reality? Are there changes? Are there changes that need to take place in your life? Maybe priorities that need to be adjusted so that you can fully participate in what God is doing in and through Hillside. If you come the next few weeks, you'll hear more about this, not our vision and our mission. Because I want us to dream big dreams. I want us to dream big dreams. When this church building was built, the dreams were larger than where you sit now. I want us to dream those big dreams again. I want us to implement our mission and live into our vision. That's why it is in the present tense. Even though we're becoming that, we are starting to be that now. So will you come along for the ride and dream big dreams and live into this vision that we believe God is calling us to? Choices.